So new video of the hell I have endured the past two days. As you can see, my swelling is going down so much. Um, I had a follow up, and we weren't sure what was going on with my cheek. But when I had my follow up on Wednesday, he gave me antibiotics, and it didn't seem like it did anything. And it was like two days later and last night I was like freaking out because I was taking the ibuprofen and everything but I was feeling a little bit more pain and it felt like it was bugging my ear a little bit but it felt like I was getting shooting pains this way. And I was like, that's not good <laughs> or normal I don't think and the fact that this fucking thing was like a hard as a rock, it's still there but that thing was bulging before and now it's just it's tucked in there a little more it still needs to drain but oh what a nightmare basically it was like 11 30 Ari was sleeping over and you know see like if I turn you can kind of still see the bump but oh my god so much better right now so much better my face practically at this point this feels normal <laughs> compared to what it has been and because, especially since I was getting like used to it, I, I don't know what's bad, big and whatnot. So, I, uh, I um, so I was like freaking out, and I just went to my parents and I was like, "Listen, this isn't normal." I was like crying and I was like, "I don't know what I should do. They're closed. I don't know what to do about this, but maybe I should go to the ER." My mom felt it and she's like, "Oh my god, it's like hard. Like it felt like a giant pus thing, like." You know? And my dad's actually he's like, yeah, I don't like that. So we're like, we're gonna go to the ER. So my brother, the one car is like broken down right now because my brother in the weather uh, had a small accident. That's a different story for another time. And what happened was is my mom's like, well, we can maybe Uber because my brother was at work or whatever. And in this case, uh, my mom was like, uh, my dad's like, well, maybe grandma can lend the car or an, or Uncle Carl, whatever. So Uncle Carl drove, picked us up, and now it was like 11.30 at night. So I'm supposed to have work at 7 a.m. And I was like, there's no way I'm going to make it to work tomorrow because God knows how long I'm going to be in the ER for. So I was like texting a bunch of people saying I'm going to the ER because of the swelling. Um, I'm not going to be able to work. Can someone cover my shift? So I'm messaging people trying to figure it out. Um, I messaged like four people. One person I kept in contact with just the general manager, just to be like, to be sure. But at that point, I was still able to find someone to kind of come in. Um, that's not the most important thing, but thing. I'm just glad someone came in. I didn't even really care about any of that, to be honest, because either way, I wouldn't have come in anyway. And then they could have just figured it out because this was an emergency. So I get to the ER. Um, you know, they do the typical thing. They, they, um... They take your blood pressure, they check your heart rate, they do all that stuff, and ask you all these questions. Are you allergic to anything besides cats and pesticides? And, oh, blah, blah, blah. Like, do you have this? Are you pregnant? Are you... And it's like a lot of bullshit, and I'm like, no, 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 no. <laughs> um, but they have to ask these things, but after a while, like, the problem is you have all these different nurses asking you the same fucking shit the whole time. And I'm just like, I hate repeating myself. <laughs> it's so irritating. Anyway. So, after all that BS... They take me, they, I think they put, do they put me back in the, no, they put me back in the waiting room because they have to, like, put your stuff in the system. And they gave me, like, a bracelet and stuff. And then, then as we went, then they were finally took me, they brought me to my room in the ER. And they had one lady see me, they had, like, that computer thing, and then they asked me, same, like, similar questions. And my, my dad, my dad helped me pay the $100 copay right then and there. Then they're like, okay. Then she's like, they're probably not going to do anything, just prescribe you more meds. And I thought, like, this is all the emergency room was going to do for me at this point. Because I thought they weren't going to check it. Because I was like, wait, that's it. You had me, my dad, pay $100 just for you to tell me that you guys are just going to prescribe me more pain meds when I already have enough. So I was like, that's weird. But then she walked out. Then yeah, a different nurse walked in. There was, like, five different nurses. I don't remember the order they came in. But one nurse came in, I think she, there was, one was the actual doctor, there was two different nurses, but the one doctor, I don't remember what order came in, I just remember one doctor, she touched it, and like, she asked what happened, and I explained everything, so that's when she decided, she's like, 
She's like, we're gonna do a CAT scan. I was like, okay. She's like, to just see. She's like, that looks like it's like fluid in there. Um, she might have had a hunch on what it was already, but like they need to see it on a CAT scan. Um, and she did explain, like, by the way, like, uh, if you're pregnant or something like that, like, you're getting radiation, so they need to know. And then they said, um, so then the other part was, they were like, we're gonna hook you up to an IV for antibiotics, and I'm like, oh, And they had to take blood work, and they had to check my urine, because that's the, like, we have to make sure you're not pregnant, because of radiation. No. Anyway, I have whole opinions about that. Anyway, but regardless, that's just my thing. I'm not gonna talk about that part. That's not important. So, I was literally there for five hours. And a CAT scan's a weird experience because they inject dye into you. They tell you that when I'm laying on the thing. They're like, it's gonna be a little weird if you've never had a CAT scan. <laughs> so, we're gonna inject the dye. It's gonna feel warm. And you're gonna feel a warm sensation. You're gonna think you're wetting yourself, but you're not. And you might get a slight metallic taste. I didn't get a, t a taste in my mouth, but when they give you that warm sensation through your body, ugh, it was very un unsettling. And it does feel like you're wetting yourself. It it's bizarre, but you're not. And it's like I knew I wasn't, because when you're like, but like it it was the weirdest sensation. But I was like really nervous in the CAT scan, and it was funny because I think they were like saying on the loudspeaker, like no funny face, because when I don't like something, I'm like, I literally make faces like that. I'm like. I don't like this. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, I'll relax my face. <laughs> so that was over in a few minutes and they said that sensation goes away. So then I was waiting and I was watching Netflix in the room. I, that's one thing about the ER. Like, I know they say you're only there temporary, but like, I was there for five hours. You couldn't have a TV in my room? I'm like, come on. Like, even if it was smaller, like just something smaller. It was so unfortunate. But anyway, it is what it is. I had my phone, it was fine. So they came back with the results much later than they anticipated or what they said. And they're like, so, you have an abscess, a large one. And I'm like, oh god, that doesn't sound very good. They're like, your oral surgeon needs to drain that right away. Like, now. <laughs> like, today. <laughs> um, they're like, it I, like that gets caused by an infection. Because I think I have like what they call like sinusitis and stuff. Honestly, when I read my CAT scan later, it was like, they had all these medical terms, but I was like, this doesn't sound very good. Like, this doesn't sound very good. <laughs> but I was like, I don't know what this even means. Um, but, yeah, they were, she was just like, um, so where's, what's your oral surgeon's number and everything? So I found like the dentist's number, but they had the, they found everything. So they were able to contact my dentist and my dentist contact the oral surgeon and think of it this it's like 4 30 in the morning right now so they already knew what was going on but the my dentist practice the place over here is a dentist he's an oral surgeon but he can perform like oral surgery there it's just not as long as you're not getting anesthesia like if you're getting like you know like laughing gas or something he can do it there and that's what i had but in this particular case they weren't sure if he would be doing this there, which they opened at 8 o'clock in the morning, or at his office. So, they said, call them at 8. And they're like, they, he sh they should take you above anyone else's appointment, just get that drained. And I was like, okay. It's like 7.30 in the morning, so I got home. I barely slept. I kind of rested for like an hour. I get a phone call from my dentist. The, the dentist and what well, wasn't my dentist exactly it was the receptionist there and I knew where she was and she was like hello like you know okay so he's not gonna take you until like 12 30 at, at his location all the way in Cresskill and I was like okay but I called him back and I said listen can you get it because I called his number that they gave me and no one was answering because they probably might not have been open yet and I said listen is there any chance I can get an earlier appointment because the ER made this sound and like it's an emergency like this has to get drained is there any chance I can get an earlier appointment and like I was like crying though I was frantic like I was like this I think I'd and literally um she was like no I understand completely like she was very nice so she's like I'll talk to the dentist so they bumped me up to 10 30 which was a little better because at this point I think it was like eight o'clock so it's like okay what's another two hours so at this point now they the receptionist from his practice calls me and she's like 
So wait, did they tell you what's gonna happen? Because this is why in the ER they told me they couldn't eat or drink anything. She's like, so you're gonna be put under like for anesthesia. They have to, because the swelling is so big, they have to like put a drain, like she didn't mention the drain part. I think she's just like, they have to drain it and stuff. She's like, but you're gonna, they can't numb it properly because it was so large. And I was like, fuck, you know, I go through the one surgery where I wanted to avoid anesthesia and now I'm like, fuck, now you're gonna put me under? And I'm like, I don't have time to worry about this. So I was like freaking out. I'm going for a walk and I was like, oh my god, this sucks, but I have no choice. I have to get it done. Like, it's gonna get worse. So I'm calming down and I get, um, and my dad drove me there and I get there. But my appointment ended up basically not being until 12 because I filed all this stupid paperwork. So dumb, so annoying. And I got this procedure. It's cost, it cost me an extra $1,500 bullshit and my dad was saying well this was like a thing related to our other surgery is there any chance like we don't pay for that because and there she's like no unfortunately like this doesn't happen all the time like it's a really it's bizarre so like it's but the stupid thing is my my oral surgeon didn't prescribe me antibiotics and i guarantee you if he did like just like a z-pack or something you wouldn't have gotten the infection he should have done it as a precaution because I've heard from literally all, everybody else I know that it's protocol to do that. He doesn't do it because I think he worries that doctors overprescribe antibiotics, which is a thing. But in this particular case, anytime you get surgery, they should just do it. And I don't know. I just, I think if he gave you the antibiotics, it would have prevented whatever was going on. I don't, it wouldn't have happened. And even when I got the CAT scan, the woman's like, you got, and she's like, it's weird, it's in your cheek. Like a lot of time with people... It, it's usually in their gum or something like I'm lucky it didn't go there because I feel like it, that could go like all this kind of shit can go straight to your brain that's what's fucking scary about this whole thing it's like this whole thing was a mess because I thought they gave me antibiotics and they didn't and it's like that's why I thought I wouldn't have had an infection and that maybe it was just bruising but the fact that it was this long and painful it was like what the hell's going on in my face like this whole thing was a nightmare but finally I went under with my surgery. They didn't completely knock me out, but they had to give me a lot of laughing gas to calm me down. I wasn't, I wasn't as nervous as I thought I'd be. Like, I was nervous, but like, but it freaks me out. They had to hook me up to like heart monitors and shit. And I'm like, oh my God, this is fucking scary. Oh, but then when they give you that laughing gas and the stuff's going like bubble gum. And he's like, how are you feeling, Michelle? I'm like, uh, I want to go to bed. <laughs> I want to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like he's like are you nauseous i'm like no i'm hungry <laughs> he's like well that's good honestly i did pretty well i think i was groggy and a little mm, but i was very confused too but that experience was weird like they were like shoving i thought they were shoving all these weird pipes in my face because they had to put i have a drain in there the stuff that coming out of it tastes like shit it's disgusting but honestly once that was in there and this has went down so much in the past like 12 hours i might have to keep the drain in there for like another day or two but they're gonna have to perform another surgery to remove it but at least this time i'm aware that i'm okay under the anesthesia and it will just be another weird unpleasant experience but i just felt it, this was a weird one too because i felt them cut me to stick the tube in there and they're like shoving all these things and they were doing weird stuff to the cheek because I was because they had to push the fluid out Ugh, this whole thing is disgusting but I will say this I'm in a lot less pain I didn't need to take an ibuprofen the whole day I took one now only because I'm a little sore because I think all the fluids being drained so from my face protruding I think there was pressure all being put on my face and at this rate it's um, it's a lot better now, but what a nightmare. Let's just, I'm just hoping at this point that this just, ugh, and all these bills, literally everything has cost me $5,000. Not joking, because that ER bill is going to be a bitch. Like, I'm having my birthday party next week, and I'm not even paying my mom. Like, mom's, like, feels so bad for me. I clean the bathroom really well for her, too, so she's, like, don't worry, we'll take care of it. I'll make lasagna or something. I'll make food. I'll do something. And my dad would maybe go pick up the cake and maybe I'm like, Mom, can you give me some balloons from work? <laughs> I was like, she's like, anything. <laughs> they just feel bad for me. <laughs> oh, what a nightmare. 
being poked with things, getting all these medications. I'm just like, shoot me now. <laughs> uh, 